everybody. Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Uncanny Avengers number one. Woo! You know, I got this issue a few days ago. I immediately sat down and read it. But I wasn't ready to do a review yet. I was, I was going to do a review like that night, but I just couldn't find the right word to describe it. So I read it again, thought about it overnight, read it again, and I'm here today. This is the kind of one word summary of everything that is in Uncanny Avengers number one. And your one word summary is, eh, and that's really the best I can do. The book lays the foundation for things that are going to come in the future, but as far as something that grips you and pulls you in and makes you excited for the series, that rejuvenates it and repowers it and makes you like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to read the next issue. No, that's not this book. But on the same hand, though, you know, you don't read the book and get done and go, well, gee, I just wasted 15 minutes of my time that I'll never get back again. Three dollars, four dollars. How much is this? This is a four dollar book. Three ninety nine. This is a four dollar book. You don't really feel like you wasted your four dollars necessarily, but you don't really feel like you got a big event out of it either. But basically, here's the lowdown. You've got some sort of bad guy who's taking these mutants who have been re-sparked by the Phoenix power, and he's putting some sort of device in their head, which makes them into like his mind slaves. Uh, and then somehow he uses that to kind of uh, make bad stuff happen, I guess is the easiest way to say it. Um, you know, the idea that the mutants are back with all the mutant heroes that return and get their powers. Of course, there's going to be mutant villains. Um, and so that's kind of setting up what the bad process is. And there is a spoiler attached to this, which happens at the end of the book, which I wasn't going to say anything about until I realized that Marvel has already spoiled it with their solicitations for issue number two. But we'll talk about that in a minute. So if you want to avoid that, it's not happening yet, but we'll get there in a minute. But of course, the key story is about the Avengers trying to come together with the X-Men. After all, you're used to the uncanny X-Men. This is uncanny Avengers. So Captain America basically realizes that he's got to do something to bridge the gap between mutant and human, to bring the Avengers and the X-Men together. Obviously, he can't use Scott Summers to do that as the leader uh, of the X-Men because he's in jail where he belongs because he tried to be a dictator with the Phoenix powers. And all you guys out there saying, well, it's all Captain America's fault because he started this fight and blah, 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 blah. Scott Summers became a dictator and belongs in jail. If you do not understand that, stop reading comics and go further your education because you don't understand the world. But Scott Summers is in jail where he belongs, so he cannot be the leader of the X-Men. Xavier's dead, so he can't be the leader of the X-Men. Who's going to trust Magneto? So Captain America's got to find somebody else, somebody else to take charge and to lead the this new group. He wants an X-Men side and an Avenger side, and they're going to come together and work together as a team. So that's what he's working on here, and that's kind of the main story behind it, is how do the Avengers and the X-Men kind of work out some of their differences, bring themselves together. And of course... One of the big themes of Avengers vs. X-Men was the Scarlet Witch and her redemption. And so, of course, she's a key figure in this because she is a mutant, but she's always been an Avenger. And so that kind of ties into that whole storyline of bringing everybody together. Um, but, I mean, again, there's a lot of setup for things that are going to happen in the future. But there's not necessarily a whole lot that happens here that's so exciting and wonderful. Now. Here's the big spoiler. The bad guy is revealed at the end of issue one. I wasn't going to give it away, but now I'm going to because Marvel has already spoiled it. So if you don't want to get it, shut off now and stay off the internet until the book comes out. But basically, your main villain who's hidden in the entire issue until the end is the Red Skull. And this is the cover for issue number two. So if you've been following Uncanny Avengers at all, if you've been following the news, then it's already spoiled that the old villain of the Avengers, of Captain America, the Red Skull, is the guy behind this new plan of cutting open the heads of mutants and sticking these devices in them to put them under some sort of mind control. So this is where you're getting your kind of crossover on the villainy side 
is, um, you know, the Avengers villain of Red Skull now taking over mutants, basically making them part of his new army for world domination. And if you like that idea, if you hate that idea, you know, whatever. That's never really been the point of what uh, Bendis does in his stories. It's never really about the heroes and the villains. It's the journey you take. It's the fun along the way. It's the interpersonal relationships. And so you got to give the book time to play out. Uh, but again, as a first issue, kind of falls flat. Now, I guess I will say one other thing here real quick about the issue. As I said a moment ago, this is a three ninety nine dollars book. It is 32 pages. Marvel has dropped their page rate down. Uh, and another thing they're doing that's making a lot of collectors unhappy is that the cover stock is basically the same uh, type of paper stock as the stuff on the inside. I'm going to open this up real quick and pull it out. Um, the paper stock on the inside has always been a little more flimsy. It's always been a little more light. The cover stock uh, is always a little harder, has a little extra gloss to it. Well, it feels like the regular cover is just that same paper as the inside. It's a cost-cutting measure. It may have a little bit extra gloss, but it's the, paint, the same uh, paper stock weight uh, and everything like that. So it's really... It's really not that exciting. And as far as the Marvel AR that's in the issue, well, unfortunately, the AR app doesn't work on my devices. Anything I try to install it on, as soon as I open it, it crashes and dies. So I've got no way of testing the AR stuff to see how it works in that issue. So can't really talk about that either. But if you're an Avengers fan, if you're an X-Men fan, this definitely does continue the story from Avengers vs. X-Men. This definitely does uh, bring in your Avengers team if you're a regular Avengers reader. Definitely does bring in the X-Men team. And there is one more spoiler at the end that I'm not giving away here. So I haven't given away everything that's in the book. There's something else that's uh, very interesting that happens at the end that I don't want to give out. But, you know, overall, if you're an Avengers fan or an X-Men fan, go ahead and pick it up. It's going to continue your storylines. You're going to, you know, get that continuation of AVX. If you didn't get into AVX... You, you're never been, you haven't been following the Avengers, or you only followed the Avengers and not the X-Men. You only followed the X-Men, but not the Avengers, and you didn't get into AVX. This is probably not the series for you, although to be fair, Avengers or X-Men books for the next year are probably not going to be for you either. Although you could try Captain America, because that one's set in space. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.